On Sunday, March 8, 2020, our buildings were closed. On any other Sunday, our doors would have been unlocked, lights turned on, musicians would have warmed up, coffee and tea prepared, greeters ready to welcome you. And we would have gathered in love and in community. We would have gathered in these sacred spaces for worship. Leading up to that day, we had already begun to feel the impact of the deadly global pandemic we now know as COVID-19. We had heard about the virus, but then it began to spread rapidly. And out of an abundance of care for the safety and well-being of our communities, our buildings were closed. No one could have imagined that today, March 8th of 2021, our buildings would still be closed. This season was one marked by loss, and we've often cried out to God in the words of the psalmist, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night and find no rest. And so we grieve. We agonize over the loss of life, the stories that have been cut short, the futures unfulfilled, the over two and a half million people worldwide who have died in this virus, the over 500,000 people in our own country, the over 5,000 in our state. The mothers and fathers sisters and brothers, siblings who are no longer with us, the friends and lovers, spouses and partners, the healthcare workers and first responders, teachers and essential workers, the community members who we no longer see, and the members of our congregation who will never again fill these seats. Lord, in your mercy. We mourn also the loss of the ways of life, the loss of touch and togetherness, the decline of mental and emotional health, the hopelessness of not knowing how long, O oh Lord, the loss of security, the loss of normalcy, the loss of stability, the loss in the rhythms of life, the loss of homes and houses, jobs and careers, time with one another in connection and relationship, the loss of the ways that we gather, the ways we worship, the ways we have done and have been the church. Lord, in your mercy. In our grief, in our loss, as we mourned the ways of a world once was, we continued to live, but differently. The world did not stop. Life around us continued, all in a new normal. We learned new ways to connect through FaceTime and Zoom, gathering in virtual spaces for school and work, for Thanksgiving and Christmas meals, for game nights, trivia nights, and family reunions. We showed our love for one another in new ways, with elbow bumps and waves, physically distanced weddings, and drive-by birthdays. We shopped for each other, checked in on each other. We wore masks and we stayed home. We adapted the ways to be church and to do church. We gathered differently, we served differently, we cared differently, we loved differently, but we still lived into our calling in becoming the embodiment of Christ's hope and peace and joy and love in our communities, just differently. Something to take note of when reading Psalm 22 is that it does not end in despair. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. 
yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. We don't claim to know what comes next, to know what the days and months ahead will be like for us, but we have the courage to put our trust in the God who has been faithfully journeying with God's people from the beginning of time and continues to journey with us today. So may we experience God's presence in these trying days and through the highs and through the lows, from the places of grief and in hopes placed in vaccines and masks, may we always remember that God is with us, that God is with you always. 